What's up, guys? We're back with another video. It's a busy month of July in the world of Canadian mixed martial arts, and we're pretty happy about it. And we're here to recap today at uh, the BTC 16 event, the first ever and hopefully not the last challenger series card from BTC, uh, who developed this new concept where uh, it's an event that is prospect oriented. Basically, you're not going to get the Adam Asenza fight or the Scott Hudson fight or like the, the big names but you're going to get some of the brightest and most exciting prospects in, in Ontario, in Canada. And to be honest, that's my stuff. That's what I'm hyped for. I was way more hyped for this event than the, the last VTC event, even the one with the Bantamweight finals, uh, uh, Vinny against uh, Alvaro Atme and the, the, the Adam Asenza fight. I was like way more hyped for this event than that one, even though I got to add to attend the last one and I couldn't go to, to this one. Unfortunately, I would have loved the, the, to be there because uh, like I said, when I posted about the event, there, there were basically 10 guys on that card that I can pinpoint and say, these guys are exciting prospects. These guys are people that I'm interested to see more of them, to see them develop into the more complete mixed martial artists. And uh, that was a step towards that. And like amazing event, to be quite honest, amazing event, my favorite BTC event of, uh, of the year so far. And like, just we did not have like the, the super exciting back and forth brawls and like, crazy finishes but every fight had some very important stuff happening at some very great performances by one or or two of the fighters involved in the fight and like <coughs> <coughs> it was just a, an amazing event and an important event i feel like we're gonna look back to this event to say, oh yeah, remember that time? It's really where like Cody Kovanchek became like one of the, the the oddest prospects in the country, basically. So that's what it was. Uh, only thing I don't know if it's arena specific because I remember when I went to the last BTC event, like I noted that it was really really dark in the arena, like the, the lighting was pretty bad. But I did not have the chance to see uh, the event on live stream yet. And I saw that one on live stream and like the lighting was pretty terrible to be honest. There were basically some spots in the cage where they were fighting in the dark, basically. So that's my, if I had to nitpick on one thing, lighting was pretty bad. But once again, stream worked out very well. Everything else was good uh, and uh, working, working cool. And the event is super delivered. So uh, let's talk about some fights, man. Let's just talk about some fights and like, I could do a whole hour on that fight. Cody Kovanchek, Jake Galbraith, uh, two of my favorite fighters, uh, young fighters, two of my favorite prospects, two guys who I believe will do big stuff in MMA. And just like, what an amazing fight, man. What a technical uh, display. Like on an event that is prospect-based, you looked at that fight and you can see that clearly these guys are the two highest level fighters on the card. Like they were not fighting at a 2-0 level. They were fighting at a way higher level than that. And it's just crazy to see these two guys fight each other so early in their careers. But like, look at where they're coming from. Cody's from Niagara top team. You know, these guys, they, they take every comers and they, they, they fight the best guys in the country. And like, if, if that's Niagara top team's motto, I'll know what's new era's motto because like, that's basically their gimmick. They're always picking the toughest fights in the country and fucking Jake Govro 2-0 uh, fought twice in his life. No amateur experience. I, I say it every time, but it is just amazing. It amazes me and just comes in against uh, Cody uh, Kovanchek. And to be honest, like the only thing I disliked about that fight was the decision. Like I am super not down with a 30-27 for Cody. Super not down. And like, yes, there's a way you could explain such a decision but i'm super i super disagree with with that score to be quite honest and i'm not saying that like oh i scored the fight for jake oh no i i, I scored the fight i'm not saying that i'm just saying that fight was not a 30 27 either way and to be quite honest man like the first round was great back and forth i feel like cody uh, was getting the better of the striking in in the beginning but as the round was coming to a close, Jake was really able to, to, to pop his jab. And 
I feel like he was starting to land the better strikes at the end of round one. So, <clears throat> like, basically, yeah, I'm going to go on a, a, a tangent here real quick for you guys, but I think that 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 that'll explain how I saw the fight. <clears throat> and, like, my ideal scoring for MMA would be that we use the full... 10 most 10 point must system like to its full extent like we use every metric in that system so for me a 10 9 round is a round where when the round is over you're like oh, okay i think maybe that guy won the round but there's also an argument that the other guy won the round because he did he did this and this and that and the other guy did this and this and that so i really don't know and then you can oh okay oh, i think that guy won so you score it 10 9 for that guy if a round is is the decisive, not dominant, just decisive, it's like clearly that guy won the round. Like he didn't do a super uh, crazy amount of damage. He just convincingly won the round. Like there's no doubt. Nobody's going to say, oh, I think that maybe this guy has. No, everybody agrees this guy won the round. Then it's a 10-8. And then if you do damage, you're close to finishing and can go to a 10-7, a 10-6. So yes, the scores in the end will, will be all over the place, that's for sure. But <clears throat> like, I think the fights, like every round could could not, could not be better represented, like in a way, because a close round, a 10-9 round, should not like be worth as much as a super dominant round, in my opinion. So that's my tangent. And the, the, the thing with that, I want to bring it back to this fight, is that this fight, in my opinion, all three rounds are 10 nines, according to the criteria I just described to you. Because, like, first round, Jake comes out, they try to grapple a little bit. Nobody wins the grappling, basically. Nobody uh, wins the, the, the grappling exchanges. They're scrambling, they're good. Then they go on the feet. <clears throat> Cody wins for a little while, but Jake starts winning in the end. So, like, each of these guys have an argument for, for winning that round. I think, honestly, I scored it 10-9 for Cody, to be quite honest, to be fair with you guys. But both guys have an argument to win that round. Then the second round, I feel like it's probably the, the only round that could be scored a 10-8 according to my criteria. But uh, that's still too close, in my opinion, to, to be that. So I can regular mixed martial arts. There's no way such round is a 10-8. But like, it's, I think it's the, the round that I have the less trouble scoring. Let's say like that. Because I feel like it was quite close on the feed. Nobody really won. But Cody really landed two beautiful takedowns that I think made the difference in that round. Even though Jake was able to, to, to not get control very much on, on the, the ground. Or, but, you know... When the, like it's super even in the striking, you got to look elsewhere. It's pretty clear that these two takedowns are like the defining thing in the round. So I think 10-9 for Cody for that round too. And <clears throat> to be honest, I think that Jake won round three. I think that, <clears throat> sorry, it was a, a, it was a little less close than round one, but pretty much about as close as round one. But I feel like Jake really did some good stuff. He almost had Cody's back. But <clears throat> he basically had Cody's back, just didn't put his second hook in because the angle that he was in and he ended up like, they ended up scrambling and he slipped and Cody took a top position, but wasn't able to do much from there. And I feel like just <clears throat> the, 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 the the back take, which resulted in like not some clean back control because there wasn't the two hooks in, but still some, good back control so i feel like jake won round three i feel like a, it's a tougher round to score than round two but an easier round to score than round one which is a, a really a 50 50 round and that's why i'm very not uh, happy about the 30 27 scores here is because like in my opinion this fight is like three super fucking close rounds one a little less close than the two uh, other which cody won Round three, in my opinion, is Jake's. And round one, like I said, you could basically score it however the fuck you want. I won't argue with you because it was that close, in my opinion. So, like, in my opinion, this fight is a 29-28 Cody that, like, is one air away from being a 29-28 Jake. It just depends on, on how you score the first round. So, seeing all these 30-27s, I, I was kind of 
maybe maybe i was just super i <laughs> like i didn't see the same fight as everybody but like this fight was just super close super entertaining the level of uh of fighting was all amazing and basically in my head and in my art there's no loser here it's just two amazing performances from two of the brightest prospects and two of my favorites two amazing young fighters and they're super young too like you know sometimes there's like prospects that are 27 28 29 years old and like they're early in their mma career but they're not that early in life these guys are kids man they're super fucking early in life and they're already fighting and they're already like some of the best fighters in their division in canada so man what a great main event and uh, let's move on to bobby poulter who is a very violent motherfucker uh, <laughs> i just love this guy because fuck man when he when he hits you First off, he, it's so fucking hard, and then he goes crazy on you, and he leaves you absolutely no chance, and it is what happened. He tagged Nelly Thompson with a head kick, and then went like uppercut, knee, knee, uppercut, uppercut, knee, uppercut, dropped the guy, ground and pound, like crazy violent sequence of just... Bobby Poulter putting everything into every shot and he got him in the first round. He's back in the win column. Super good performance for him. Like exactly what the, the doctor asked for. Like when you go uh, out west and you have like a bad performance. Uh, I'm sure Bobby's not happy about his last fight before that one. And just to come back quite uh, with a quite quick turnaround. Maybe not as quick as Dorian. Who we're we're going to talk about uh, soon. But quick-ish turnaround and Let's get back into the win column. Guys now for like four and one, I believe. So Bobby Poulter, super violent, can't miss fight. So I love it. Give me more. Then uh, I'm have a drink. As, as you can see, my, my voice is fucked up. Because I want my voice to be clear because I want to talk, uh, talk about Liam Gallagher, who is very, very good. Like in my opinion, before this weekend, we had really three rookies that, that begun their careers in 2022 in Canada that you could consider these guys as like potential candidates for rookie of the year. It was Medzizide Van, Tommy Morrison, and Ben Tynan, the, the, the heavyweight fighting for LFA, who's a Canadian, but who lives in the state, was like a Division One All-American wrestler and stuff. So really, these three guys were, were sticking out a lot. And then at BFL, we had Navid Zangane, who made his pro debut, won a belt in his first pro fight, and who looks like a, another like crazy Iranian wrestler. So he gets added to the list. And I feel like with such a performance... Again, Matt, against Matt Dawson, who is such a tough opponent. And like Liam Gallagher was able to dominate that fight. And Dawson was there to fight. Uh, yes, he gets controlled. When he gets taken down, Matt Dawson gets controlled. Uh, he, like there's no way around it. But every time he made Liam work hard uh, to keep his position, he kept being super annoying uh, with, with the strikes from under. And, like, the guy's just a tough guy to fight. You can defeat him. Like, there's ways. And, like, I think there's... I don't want to say a blueprint, but his three last fights. Unfortunately, Matt Dawson fought, like, heavy grapplers, wrestler grapplers, and they were able to dominate him on the ground. But each and every time, he's making it tough. And to be honest... um, Liam Gallagher made it look as good, if not better, as Gabe Sagman just did. And Liam is only 2-0. So I feel like with such a performance, uh, Liam Gallagher has his name to, to, to that short top five list of guys who might be the rookie of the year, might be the best rookie uh, we've seen uh, start his pro career in MMA in 2022. And man, I stand behind that because the, the, the guy is very good in every phase of MMA. He's a good striker. He's an amazing wrestler. He is very intelligent is he has a good process which i like to see in young guys and uh like just he, he got swept once and immediately triangle arm bar use that to get up to his feet like everything he does is like so efficient he's very very good i'm super impressed with liam gallagher and i can't wait to see more then another very impressive performance was dorian dakai who man this guy is crazy but i, I like it but I was wondering when I saw the matchup, I didn't know about Nick Klein, but I saw that the guy was 3-0 and uh, Dorian just came like four or five weeks away. 
fought Ryan Loader, the, the team of familiar wrestling coach, and he lost that fight. And it was a 15-minute decision where, like, he tried and he got it and he hit in return. So, man, it was, like, kind of a tough war to be back as soon. And with a, with a very tough opponent, Nick Klein was 3-0 coming into that fight. I had fought for LFA. I had fought uh, like in good promotions and won in good promotions uh, against uh, his last opponent was two and zero, and he defeated him. So uh, at LFA, so like very high level opponent and Dorian the guy just showed so much improvement in that fight. I was extremely impressed with him and with his process. Like that's what like like I just said with Liam, that's what you want to see in young fighters. And for the first time. You really felt like Dorian knew exactly what he wanted to do in the cage. He came in and like he's known as the grappler. He's known as being a very aggressive takedown artist. And like against Ryan Loader, when he, he decided to, well, not what really when he decided because he was getting spam takedown attempts on him. But like the, the few moments he had on the feet, even though he was super exhausted, he was able to land some really good shots on Ryan Loader. And at, at a point, I, I think in round number two, if I remember well, uh, he almost put Ryan Loader on skates and had, had an opportunity to basically finish the fight. He wasn't like that close, but still like a glimpse of hope came at a point in that fight. And Dorian knew his team knew uh, they saw that and they said maybe we could use that and they just did and Dorian came out was striking with Nick Klein was doing well was landing the bigger shots and then soon enough Nick Klein was shooting and when Nick Klein was shooting then Dorian just was sprawling on him was taking the better position so it was a, a more striking heavy affair that you're used to seeing from Dorian. But all this striking led to his opponent shooting on him and Dorian being like so big, so athletic, so uh, so strong and also so technical as a grappler. Uh, was able to, to sprawl on his opponent who was desperate and just like immediately get to the better grappling position. He didn't even have to waste energy on some takedown. The, the guy just shot on him like lazily and gave him the... The, the, the better position and that was all because of Dorian's success striking so to to see those type of of evolution the, that type of evolution in a guy who's only three five deep in his pro career it's pretty impressive from Dorian Dakai so uh, amazing performance nice stuff and another guy that like since the first time I've seen him fight he was on my list of guys also he's a Santos brothers jiu-jitsu uh representative and uh, i am also a nova unia uh, jiu-jitsu guy my team is a nova unia team so basically uh, wagner fabiano is is also my master basically <laughs> in canada so i'll always root for darian for sure but it's a guy that I, i've seen uh, since his first pro fight and that I, he was on my list of guys to watch and the improvements he's making man he, they're pretty crazy that early in his career the guy's already very very good and he's a middleweight too so we can i feel like, I don't, don't want to jump the gun or anything, but I feel like at middleweight, the guy's now three and one. Two or three fights yeah, next year, he could be on the contender in 2024. So, never know. Then, Kevin Bastien Popovic, my man, against Charles Azoulay. And I'm just so happy for Kevin, man. I'm just so happy for Kevin because. The guy works super hard. He is like I always say it. He's loved by everybody at Nigro Top Team because he's like the best teammate you can have. He's like the the most involved guy you can get in the gym. He's like he's such an amazing guy. One of my favorite person in MMA, like ever, <laughs> basically. But I'm just so happy because he really came into that fight with confidence. Like he really came into that fight like he knew that he was gonna beat that guy, which. Like, I, I can't really say about his other fights. Yes, he he, I, he came out really strong against uh, McInnes. And, like, I feel like during the fight, he really realized that, oh, yeah, I'm going to be that guy. I'm going to be that guy. But I don't know if he came into that fight super confident that he was going to beat that guy because of his previous experiences uh, as a pro. Which, man, the guy started 0-2, but, like... I, I, I won't say it enough. He fought Nick Ouellette in Serious City, which is absolutely insane uh, for your two first pro fights. But that's that's 
kind of what he, that uh, kind of is what uh, Kevin does, and fuck, uh, he, he knew that fight that he was gonna win. Like he, he in his confidence, the way he came out, just uh, applied his game plan. Uh, is an amazing grappler. Like I said in the preview I did for BTC, uh, the guy can be a, a, an absolute wild man when he strikes, but that's because he just doesn't care if it goes to the ground because he's that good. And uh, w when he got the takedown, instantly took the back, worked from the back, got the choke, like really bread and butter win. But like I said, I'm just so happy because I've seen Kevin for a while. He's a Quebecer, he's a fellow Quebecer, and I've seen him fight at Fight Quest. And like, he was a double champ. And like, there was like a wave of, guys fighting at the same time that we were, all, we were all like oh these young guys are gonna become really good pro fighters they were like of course tommy morrison and piet Vierge, kevin bastien papa wick zach powell maxime souci uh, frederic dupra and they all be became very good pro fighters but like kevin started slower than everybody else and like we just i've just in the last two fights seen not seen back because he's evolved so much since then, but like I re saw the aura of the like the fight quest double champ super hype top amateur prospect Kevin Bastien Popovic. So I'm just so happy for the guy because he works hard every day in the gym and like he, he dedicates his like he moved so far away from from his home and everything to to be there and eat Aaron's Jeffrey's absolutely disgusting food, uh, disgusting looking food. Might I say I never tasted it? I'm sure. Uh, AJ is a very good cook, but he, man, sometimes it looks like some trash, like, <laughs> like, you know, a sad meal, like, just like, it's good for you, but you eat that and you're like, oh man, this just does not taste good. And uh, I wish I was at McDonald's right now. So shout out to, to Aaron. He's the man, but, uh, you know, Kevin, like he just gave up so much for this and to see uh, the uh, the uh, the efforts pay out, to see him finally have success as a pro. I'm just so happy for the guy. And as for Charles Azoulay, man, when you take such a tough fight in your first pro fight, you, you just, that's going to happen sometimes and you can only grow from that. And he's another guy who was a, a an amateur champion in Quebec. So another guy who's kind of hyped up and just starts it as a pro, loses his first fight, like, some of the best fighters have done and uh, we'll see what's next for him i'm very confident uh, in his future then another super impressive performance ryan yap sam uh, man this guy is very good he really knew what to do with amin amin is an amazing striker and he, if you can get him on the ground you can probably do some work against him because he's still like he's getting better he's working on it you can see but like there's still some stuff that like when you're as good a, a striker as amin like i don't want to see the guy close his guard when he gets taken down like he gets taken down and works from close guard for like two minutes and i'm like bro just please get up man you're like so good on your feet you're probably gonna win and then like he we kept getting taken down by yapsam who was doing real well and and the third round yapsam knew that i mean was kind of concerned with the takedown even the, the second round and so they started striking a little more and like even though i mean was kind of concerned with the takedowns in fact uh, he was still having some success and in my opinion he still won that third round so uh I mean, keeps like keeps on not winning while still showing us very good stuff. Like I know that he's a good fighter. He's well trained. He's from a great camp. Uh, I'm super confident in his future. He's not gonna keep losing all these fights like that. That's not gonna happen. The guy's like getting better each and every fight, and he keeps showing us these glimpses of uh, what a good fighter he is. But Yapsam really came in with the game plan. Came in super prepared for the specific matchup and really impressed the hell out of me in his pro debut. Ryan Yapsam, that's another name that I'm going to have to add to my list. And like another guy at 135, just crazy division. Then, uh, Matt Smith, Curtis Richard, man, poor dirty Curtis, man. <clears throat> Fucking broke his shit. That's sad. At least it wasn't like, at least for us, like for the fans, at least it wasn't like a clean like leg break where the leg fucking snaps into Anderson Silva style and shit. And like I'm not saying you you can't break a bone without snapping your leg in two, but it's just like we had every image from the Anderson Silva except like the worst one, which is the leg snapping into. So uh, that basically the thing here is that 
I was at a birthday party, okay? So uh, when the event was live, I, I I had the stream on, but I was like outside count, like outside, outside, and also outside of uh, my city. So uh, like in the country where we don't get that good of a signal. So to be honest, the stream was lagging and shit, and I was mainly uh, keeping the, the, the thing open to, to be able to get the results which I failed quite miserably. And uh, shout outs to MMA Empire who always post the results and I was able to just repost their post in my story and do the results like that because I wasn't like that focused to to, to be able to, to, to take the screenshots and like post the results myself. And uh, so when I saw the result, I was like, oh no, a leg injury. I hope it won't be too bad. And then I, I knew that before I actually watched the fight. And when I watched the fight, like I couldn't like I, I couldn't get out of my mind the fact that these guys were kicking, they were leg kicking like crazy. Like the I don't know is if it's because I knew that there was gonna be a leg injury that I was focusing on the leg kicks, but like the only thing I could think about while looking at the fight is like, oh man, they're kicking their legs super hard. And on both sides, like Matt Smith was landing some good uh some good kicks, some good leg kicks. Curtis Richard was landing some good leg kicks in return and man that Smith started off well. Uh, I think he won the first round. I think he started the first, the second round well, but Curtis was getting into his rhythm. And I feel like at the, the, the moment of the injury, Curtis was starting to maybe win the second round. So I feel like we could have uh, ended up with a very, very good and close fight in the end where it, it maybe would have been 1-1 one, one, uh, after two. And then uh, some of one of the two guys would have had to, to gut it out in the third round and get the, the victory, but like did not end this way. Matt Smith uh, wins in his pro debut, the TKO by leg injury. And I'm super, I'm super sad for Curtis. I hope he won't be out too long or just out. Like maybe he hadn't fought in like years first fight he got like flying elbowed in the face and second fight is just fucking breaks a bone while trying to leg kick so John, tough luck for a fighter with super fun <laughs> like super fun uh his personality is amazing but his fighting style is super fun too so i wish I, i'll get to see more of dirty curdy in the future but like he, i wouldn't blame him if he if, if he said fuck it i'm out then keanu young cody kent uh fight that Basically, did not really start. The okay, Kiano Young like uh, landed uh, when they were getting up from the ground. Landed an amazing body, a knee to the body. It was beautiful, and it really hurt Cody Kent, who uh, was trying to stand up and immediately did not stand up and got grounded and pounded. And I think he, the ground pound shots may have even put him out. So we basically got TKO to the body, then put out, uh, which is a very savage way to get finished and a very savage way for Keanu Young to get his first pro win. And I wish I could say more, but bro, he, it lasted like 40 seconds and he just melted him. So amazing stuff by Keanu Young. And... Um, Unfortunately, I got to talk a little bit about the Luke Roberts, uh, Nikki Heinrich situation. Um, the, 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 they both made weight. And unfortunately, on fight day, Nikki said that he had to go to the hospital. Uh, something about his balls. I don't know. <laughs> and like, I'm not, I'm not even joking, guys. Okay. I'm not even making a joke. Like, oh, the guy had balls problems so he didn't make it to fight. That's not even... Like, he, that's really like the the thing he said to, 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 to the promotion. He went to the hospital because he had problems with his balls. So uh like man, I, I'm not I won't shit on the guy i won't criticize the guy i know it's not the first time that it's happening and uh, like it's the stuff i don't know what he's going through i don't know what's happening with him i don't know why he can't make it to fight night as consistently as he's doing uh and like i don't like i said i'm not here to shit on the guy or, or nothing whatsoever but like the only criticize i uh, critic critically crit how, how should i say that the only way i'm gonna criticize him is that like, bro, if you're not sure that you're going to make it to fight night for any reason, may it be like you're just scared and you don't want to fight or you got an injury that you haven't disclosed and finally it's kind of bugging you way more than it should. And like whatever reason it is, whatever excuse it is, 
I do not care. I please don't make it to don't make it to weigh in. Don't weigh in, please. Just don't because like Luke Roberts, especially fucking Luke Roberts, who's been having every trouble in the world to, to, to having opponents. Nobody wants to fight that fucking guy. He's very, very good. And Nikki stepped up to the plate and was ready and they made weight and everything was going according to plan. And then like it's just so rough for, for the guy that gets left in the dirt like Luke here because like, bro, you weighed in. They had the face off. Everything was going according to plan. The fight was happening. Uh, and then fight day, every, something happens. And, like, I know it can happen, but it can't happen that often, too. Like, some some fighters, yes, I, I've had that happen to them, even in the UFC. Like, that on fight day, something happens backstage, and they just can't make it out. And it, it happens, but, like, not many fighters have it happened to more than once. And, like... Bro, man, I, like I said, I don't want to, to come here and shit on the guy because I don't know what he's going through. I don't know what's really happening with him. But, like, if you have any doubt that you'll be able to make it to the fight, please just don't make it to the fight. Like, Luke Roberts, if he was going to get canceled, you know? Like, fuck, he wasn't going to fight. So don't make him weigh in, cut weight, suffer, and do all that shit. And don't do that shit to yourself if you're injured or not well. or Like, it's not good. Like, weight cutting is pretty bad. And some people have died from that shit. And you both guys did the weight cut, did all the work for it. Just to not happen. And, like, please, if you have any fucking doubt that you're going to make it to fight night, like, just... Tell the promoters that you're not going to make it and like, cancel the fucking fight before weigh-in. May it be like two days from, three days from, whatever. Like, I'd recommend at least a week because, like, if the guy, you, you, you know, you're, you, you guys are fighters. Like, a fight week, you, there's plenty of stuff that you got to do before the fight. So, like, maybe before fight week so the guy doesn't have to get into, like, fight week mode and do all the, the shitty stuff and water load and all of that fucking bullshit just to not fight in the end. But, like, Please, guy, don't don't make it to the way in. And like, I'm not coming here saying that. Oh, Nikki went and uh, weighed in and knew that he was not gonna fight the day after. Like I said, things can happen, but like not that often. And like, I just the only thing I I don't like about it is that they weighed in and that they all they both at went through like the, the weight cutting and all of that stuff just for it not to happen. Like, if you have any doubt injury or whatever because it's a fucking serious sport like uh, i wouldn't go in there super injured to fight for like the money that they're fighting for you got to be crazy to do that and i know these guys are crazy and that's what makes it awesome because we as fans get to enjoy that and even i a train jiu-jitsu i wouldn't fucking go in a pro mma fight get my head kicked in with by a flush shin. i wouldn't do that shit i think it's absolutely crazy that people do that shit and they do it injured for no money so man if there's ever any doubt that you're gonna make it guys just don't make it just tell the promoter i'm not gonna make it i'm gonna lift the fight another day yes some people are gonna say oh he backed out he's a bitch or who fucking cares in the end what people think about you just like, don't put yourself at risk and don't do that to your opponent. Who, it's like basically waiting to, 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 to go out to fight and he did everything right. And on fight day, he gets the rug pulled from under him. That It's just bad, man. It's just a bad situation. So let's uh, close it on a higher note. Fight of the night, in my opinion. Of course, Cody and Jake. Uh, what a display from such an amazing young mixed martial artist. And as for the performances of the night, bro, I could have gave it basically to, to, to anybody. It could have been Bobby Poulter. Could have been my boy, Kevin Bastien Pavlovic. Could have been Ryan Yapsam easily. But I got to give it to, to Liam Gallagher and Dorian. Liam, because he's like super impressive at such a young uh, experience level and age. And Dorian, just for the the massive improvements and the the massive like the the the, the intelligent approach and process based approach that he, he had in that fight, that's what you want to see in your top level prospects. And the fact that he was able to, to just add this to his game like this on a quick turnaround after a first pro loss, when you never know how the guy's gonna feel, how is it gonna be like mentally, physically? Because like I said, it was a very tough fight, and just to come in and make it look easy like he did. 
props to Dorian, props to Gallagher. These are my performances of the night. And like I said, amazing event, my favorite BTC event yet this year. And can't wait to see what's next for uh, Ontario's promotion. Uh, I heard there's a show in August. I probably will be there if I can. And uh, that that's my vacation month, though. I'll, there, there's like a week that I'll be completely out uh, of the world. <laughs> I'll be uh, there. I won't even have like phone signal and shit. So uh, there's one week that if it's there, uh, it won't happen for me. But maybe I could send my partners. We never know. I can't wait to see what's next for BTC. Thanks for tuning in. Like, subscribe, do whatever you love in life, and don't show up to the weigh-ins.